was a very wet day and I had to take a 45 minute bus ride from my friend's home, but it was worth it. So welcome to day two of my Hidden Tokyo solo exploration for hidden gems around a city. Today's destination is the Gotokuji Temple, which some may know as the Lucky Cat Temple. Gotokuji Temple is famous for its lucky cat statues or Maneki Neko, which are believed to bring good fortune to those who visit. It's nestled away in the Setagaya Wat, away from the hustle and bustle of Tokyo City. Legend has it that a cat once saved the life of Ii Naotaka, a feudal lord, by beckoning him into the temple. Coincidentally, the cat had saved Naotaka from an impending thunderstorm, and here I was, arriving at the temple on a rainy day. To show his gratitude, the lord revamped the temple and dedicated it to the Ii clan, and the Maneki Neko statues here are white because it was a white cat that saved Naotaka. There are over a thousand Maneki Neko figurines here and they were all offerings made by visitors so you can purchase them at the nearby temple office next to the main hall and they come in various sizes. You can buy one, make a wish, and leave the Maneki Neko behind at the shrine. Or it's said that you can bring it home with you and return to place the Maneki Neko at the temple to give thanks when your wish is fulfilled. The Lucky Cat Shrine itself is pretty small but the entire temple grounds are worth exploring for the gardens and the pagoda too. If you're up for it, I wasn't because it was raining. You can even try to spot the hidden Maneki Neko throughout the temple like a little game of hidden Miki. Oh, and I respected this dude for his vlog work. So that's the temple office to look out for to buy the Maneki Neko figures. I bought the second smallest one and an Omikuchi and it was truly a lucky cat temple since it was the first time, I think, that I pulled a Daikichi which means best luck. If you pull a bad luck one, you can tie it to designated areas on the temple grounds. If it's good luck, you can bring it home. Anyway, I read that the pagoda itself has random carvings of the lucky cat, so good luck planning them all. And there's also a small cemetery around where it said lies the remains of the E clan. If you happen to come during the spring season, you'll be able to enjoy tons of the sakura cherry blossom trees. From here, it was a short walking distance to the Kotokuji station where I'm headed to my next stop for a quick, cute bite. Tip about planning your itinerary around these hidden gems in Tokyo. You have to find which ones are the closest to each other. From Gotokuji, it was perfectly convenient to hit the Sitagaya Daita station. Within 10 minutes of the train ride and a 3 minute walk, I was at my destination, which is Shirohige's Cream Puff Factory, famous for the official Totoro Cream Puffs. So, I've already done a separate video where I covered everything you need to know about finding Shirohige's Cream Puff Factory, which is also now known as Tolo Bakery, so I won't go too into detail about it. I'll put a link in the description so you can watch that if you like. I got here around 3.30 pm, so a lot of things were sold out, but don't be discouraged if you aren't able to dine in. One tip, downstairs is for takeaway, so grab those cream puffs fast, and Obacha will even give you a little tutorial sticker to go with it. But I also got lucky since I didn't eat hot foods and just wanted to drink with my cream puffs, and so I managed to get a seat upstairs. And also I was just one person anyway, so that's easy. The Totoro cream puffs have seasonal flavors depending on when you visit. These ones were banana caramel, I think, and strawberry. So good. Here's a video on my channel to look out for. I also included info on where to go after Shirohige, which is Shimo Kitazawa. It's walking distance from Shirohige, and you can easily spend at least half a day here. You can also alight first at Shimo Kitazawa station before heading to Shirohige. This neighborhood is especially popular for vintage shopping and they recently revamped the area adding even more interesting eateries. Basically, it's a shopping haven if this is what you like. I, again, could not spend that much time here. It was getting late because I needed to go back to the city to meet my friend for dinner. Actually, no, we went for Dr. Stretch first, but I'm not gonna document that. And after that, we went for dinner, which is tikimen, which is noodles in dipping sauce. It was great. And that's the end of this episode. The next one will be my last Hidden Tokyo episode where I went to Inokashira Park. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and feel free to let me know what you think or drop any suggestions. Thank you again and bye.